two, they're not the same game. They're different games. They just they also made individually. Just don't call them Dark Side as one and two. Okay, I'm gonna open my front and side. Most of the time, if you're doing a character, your head is the most important thing of all. It is what will sell the character. And generally, if you're modeling or you're doing a, let's say, a model for the character, for the client, you will always detail the head first and give it to the client to sign off. Because the body is a bunch of cylinders attached, attached to a box. Okay, so that's not really that important. So I'm going to grab the front and side I have. I'm going to grab my front first of all. I've cut it in half already because I only need the one half. And then I'm going to place it. So I'm going to go Control T. I'm, I don't know if someone's teaching in Photoshop. I hope somebody is because it's not supposed to be me. Control T will transform. To make it uniform, you hold Shift. If you don't, it'll just squash and stretch him and make him nice and round. Okay. You don't want to do that. Enter will end it. Just move it over to the side. Now we're going to add some guides so we can actually place the other one properly. I'm going to guess that's about the top of his head under all his hair. And the middle of his eye. Under his nose. And if you don't know by now, the people that draw will know, is that your ear just goes under, the end, your earlobe generally ends underneath your nose. Okay. The top of your ear, top of your eye. The middle of your mouth is the middle of your eye. I mean, the end of your mouth is the middle of your eye. And that's just a few little tricks when you're drawing. It works the same for my view. And let's put this at the end here. Yeah. And I'm going to bring the other one in. I'm going to call this one side. Uh, sorry, front. I'm going to try and model as much as I can in class. Unfortunately, I will record extra because I will not be able to do all of it in class. So I will start the head, finish it at home, bring the lessons next week, start the ear. Because the ear is very important. Funny enough, the ear will have more detail than your entire head. Because there's so much detail in the ear. Your body is relatively simple. Apparently, I'm supposed to teach you the hand because it's the hardest thing known to man. It's really not. So I'm going to actually cover the hand in a very quick lesson. And next week, I'll cover the ear, move on to the body, because the body is actually more important. Okay, let's call it character sheet breakdown. I'm doing this in Photoshop this time, so you have both methods. You can do this in Max if you want. That's up to you. I'm doing it this way so I can actually line up because in Max there's no guides. I'm going to try and get the chin in first. There we go. Halfway through the mouth and halfway through the eye. I think we actually got pretty decent. Shift it up. Up and down keys move up and down. Uh, that'll be fine. It'll never be 100% accurate because I think he's slightly tilting his head, but it's in this case it's fine. I just need it. And because the angle is not perfectly side on, his nose and brow looks a little bit heavier. So we'll just leave that as it is. I'm going to crop it now. Grab your crop tool. Bring it in. And now I'm going to save the front. So I'm going to crop it again. I'm going to control shift S will save as. Save it as front. I'm going to save it as a JPEG. For this exercise, JPEG is perfectly fine. For texturing, never give me a JPEG because I'll just fail you without even looking at it. Because JPEGs, the compression is shit. And you will lose all the beautiful detail you put into your texture. Okay. I click OK. Control Z and is an undo. If it doesn't undo enough, go Control Alt Z. And now I'll go back to the side. JPEG again. And side. We are done. Now we're just going to close the jar. What I want to do is just quickly show you if you need to. I'm going to open the front. I'm going to quickly just save it as contours. I'm going to double click it. I just want to give you an example of what the contours will do. If you need to follow, and when I mean the contours of the face, it literally follow the muscles of the face. Let's get rid of all these grids. They're getting annoying. Uh, it doesn't even know how to get rid of grid lines quickly. Please don't ask me six million questions on Photoshop. I only know how to use it for what I use it for. Removing red eye for my boss and texturing. Because he thinks red eye is important to remove in Photoshop. Okay, so let's grab any other color. I'm going to start with, let's use blue. You will start off, is that thick enough? Working around the eye, so you'll start off the eye. Work around just underneath the brow, all the way around. The contours will fall out, so this contour will go around. Keep going around. You'll start around the mouth. One contour, another contour. You'll keep adding lines. Then this line will come across. Sorry, this one will come down, yeah. This line is important. All these are. 
So when you make him smile, these contours will actually deform correctly. Okay, so you'll just keep making them all go out. But you will get the hang of it very relatively quickly once you start actually shaping it. And then you'll bring lines outward. outward. Okay. okay, but you will get the concept of it. Lines will go follow all the way through. I'm just giving you an idea of what it should, so then it deforms. The same as if you're doing the pelvis, please don't make it straight. It will not work. So let's grade plane, call it front, because I'm in the front viewport. Now, for symmetry reasons, please try to keep it as perfectly centered. So I'm going to just right click and make sure it's centered to the world as straight away. Go and find out what the actual resolution is of the image. I'm going to grab the front and see properties and details. It says it's 1280 by 450, so it's 1280 height by 450. Okay, once again, drag and drop the image. Okay, remove all the detail because you're not modeling from it, you don't need to worry about it. Now I'm going to shift this above the zero and I'm going to put it, uh, his face literally to the zero of the the harsh line. There we go. Zoom in as much as you can and try to get it as close as possible. Now we need to get this pivot to the bottom. Okay, but first let's duplicate this one and create the side. So now we're going to call it the side. You might as well use it because the height is not going to change. All that's going to change is the width. So we've got properties, details. You can see it's 1280, now it's 1124. Okay, once again drag and drop the image onto the plane. Let's rotate it to the side. 90 degrees and shift it over. You want it out of the way so don't even worry about it doesn't have to be perfectly placed anywhere just as long as it's out of the way and it doesn't bug you. And this the same with this one. Move it back out of the way. You want your model to be in the middle and that's what takes preference. Okay. If you don't want the shadow like I don't, please switch from realistic to shaded. It. It'll get rid of the shadow. Now we're going to adjust the pivot. So select the front, go to your hierarchy tab, fixed pivot, at the bottom here is X, Y, and Z. You can see it goes 224 by 0.89. Just right click on the, sc the scroll next to it. Right click on it. It'll zero it out. Just zero them all out. It'll go perfectly to the center. I'm going to go control V just for this exercise and I'm going to do a symmetry. I mean a mirror it. And then you at least have both sides of it just in case you need it for some reason. I generally don't, but why not? As you can see, Max does not like the quadra effects card. I don't know if, you're, if this happens at home, if you were the image is crap. As you can see, it's very pixelated, very, the anti-aliasing is really bad, and I know the image is very high res. This is because the Quadra Effects and the uh, Max don't get along. The Nitrous viewport likes a NVIDIA graphics card most of the time. So that's the downside. Right click on all your, so grab all your images, Control A, Object Properties, Show Frozen in Gray, so when you freeze it, it doesn't go gray. And now we're going to get started. Let's save it. Uh, I'll be jumping between Mudbox and ZBrush just to teach you Mudbox and ZBrush because unfortunately not every company uses both. Okay, or even one. Depending where you are, some like at Luma they use both, luckily enough, but a lot of companies will get the entire auto their suite and you use Mudbox. Some of them will just have Z, ZBrush or some of them will have Sculptures. You just have to go with the flow. They're all roughly similar, similar to use. I prefer ZBrush because my machine at home can handle it. Mudbox, my machine dies and says no because my machine is so old. And so is ZBrush. Okay, so we're going to call it head. We're going to start with the eye and work our way outwards. Okay, so I'm going to convert it to a poly. Make sure it's just one face, literally one poly with four points and start shifting it. I'm going to just put it there, start to round these people. Go crazy. Just underneath the brow. And now here comes the problem. Most people will sit here and model for hours and forget that there's actually 3D in it. Please don't. Go to your left view, press L. I will be using W for translate, E for rotate, left for L for the left view, F for the front view, T for the top view, P for perspective. At the moment you can see it's all the way back, so we need to shift this a little bit forward. You can see they don't line up. I'm going to take the more of the angle versus 100% accuracy. Okay, now I'm going to start with either side, so I'm going to start moving. Let's go inwards. So grab any edge, hold shift to create a new face. 
I'm going to create it for that corner and then I'm going to create it again. I'm just trying to get that little corner in. So I'm going to shift these. Off the bat, I don't need it to be that tight on the top. So start shifting it around. It's the same as when you're doing the hard surface stuff, except for this is slightly more organic. You want it to be tighter there, a little bit more loose on the top, and get it going all the way around. We know that this is not going to be anywhere near where it should be, so we're going to adjust it and move it slightly back. Go to your perspective viewport and double check if everything is going okay. Maybe this is too far back, especially on the top of the brow. And now, most people make the biggest mistake is two things they make. They make the face too flat, first of all. And second of all, they forget that the, uh, there's an eyeball behind the actual eyes. So let's just go and place an eyeball. In this case, a sphere. See if we, and then the eyeball is never perfectly straight, so slightly rotate it off and go and place it. Go to your left view, try to place it as best as you can. It should be somewhere over there. Make sure it's lined up in the front viewport. And we're going to hide that for now, and then we will adjust it afterwards. Okay. Now let's go carry on modeling. Grab this side, bring this side down. I like to go to the extreme once again of everything. Go straight to the bat bottom. Don't worry about the middle detail, the curves, none of that. Then you can go to the left view and move it back. Don't worry about placement because we know that we're not following that. We're just trying to place where it should be in space. Move this one a little bit back because there's part of the brow. Shift it over that way. Now we're going to add a symmetry and a smooth to see if it's actually doing anything. So we need to make sure that that pivot goes to the center of the world again. That's why I made sure everything's dead center. When it's modeling, make it all dead center. It's easier for symmetry. Go to your hierarchy tab. Say effect pivot. Once again, right click, right click. Just make sure it's all centered. Make sure it's all zeroed. Now we're going to, if these buttons you don't have not activated or turned them on yet in the whole module one, they will be turned off. Please, it's the one, you got pin stack you rarely use, you use show end result a lot. You will show, you will say make unique a lot. You will use the remove modifier, which is the little dustbin a lot. And this one you will because you need to activate, so you'll say show buttons. These I've added from module one and I'll keep adding to it. You can make multiple versions of it. In order to edit it, go say configure modifier. You can see there's a whole bunch of presets already made. Surface modifiers, conversion modifiers, radiosity modifiers, perhaps. You can go through all of them and see what each one comes up with. You can even make your own, which I generally do. Configure, modify sets. Total buttons, you can add more. You can minus, you can do whatever you want. I'm going to leave it the way the amount that it is now, which is 10. You just have to drag and drop something from the left to the right. So you select something on this side and drag and drop. So let's go and say, let me remove the mirror and add it in again. So let's go to find the mirror. There we go. Drag and drop it onto there. Once you're happy with it, you click OK. I'm going to do a symmetry over here. If you cannot see the symmetry in your viewport, just click flip down here. It'll pop up. Now you need to do a turbo smooth. Please put the smooth. The smooth is generally the last thing you put on the entire model. Please don't put the smooth, then the symmetry will break. Okay. And then I'm going to put two. I'm just going to kill my grid for now. And as you can see, it's lining up, which is generally what we want. And let's carry on modeling. Let's see if the smooth. You can turn off show end result over here. You will toggle between it on and off quite heavily. You can see that we need to shift this slightly up to get the eye shape properly. This one needs to come down slightly to get that little curve up and around. Okay. And this one needs to go there. Now we're going to hold shift again to create this edge over here and add more detail there again. Because we need this to pinch slightly, just add the detail from the off, off the bat. You might as well and see if it's fine. And go to your left viewport again and you can see that these edges are not right. Grab these and move them back because they need to go back so you can create that curve over there. So you'll move it slightly back. Just remember, it'll curve out, curve out, the same with the mouth, curve out. Mm. This will curve down, but you will get the hang of it. It'll take you a few times to while you're modeling, but you will get the hang of topology. And you, you'll get the hang of it quicker if you have to actually skin and model your own characters. Let's grab the bottom one here, and I want to add two rows of detail. Uh, let's make it three, the same as the top. So I'm going to go one, but this time I'm going to go straight to there, rotate it, place it. And I'm going to put it into place already. I'm going to go straight into this little groove over here. That's what I'm going to try to follow. So I'm going to try to follow that groove there. Place these, go to left view, and start placing it straight away. Once again, I will adjust it to the eye afterwards. Okay. Grab the edge again, hold shift create. 
you will do the whole body. You can do the. There's multiple ways to do the body. You can start with cylinders. It's up to you. I, I will generally just start with the, the same way I do this all the way through. And then once again, I need to bring it to here, to this corner here. So I'll bring this to the corner there just to create this little curve. Bring this up. Once again, don't forget you're working in 3D, so just keep shifting the stuff forward. Otherwise, it's going to get flat or fall away or whatever might be the reason, as you can see. So just start shifting it in space. See if you're doing it fine. And now we're going to bridge this. So we're going to bring this over one more time, and then we're going to bridge it. Okay, so hold it one more time. So we, now we've got one, two, three. And we've got the final. And we're going to curve this one in slightly, curve this one as well, and bring it in. And now we're going to bridge these two corners here and bridge it. Because now we've got the eye shape. Might not be 100% accurate, but you can always go and shape it as you need. Now we need to make sure, first of all, it looks decent in 3D. Sometimes following the concept art is, uh, or the stuff is beautiful, except for sometimes you also need to take into consideration it has to work in the space you're working. Like there, it looks terrible. So let's go and shift these forward because they will. Just shift them all. Just remember you're working in every single axis. You are never working in one. You're unfortunately not privileged with working in, with only one. This is not 2D. That's why even if you get a 2D concept artist, generally you'll realize in 3D you'll be doing a lot of shifting because he thinks in 2D. You have to think in 3D. So sometimes you'll say, but it doesn't look exactly the yeah, because you, then you have to validate why you did the changes you did. And generally most of the time you'll go, cool, okay, makes sense. Or if he's a 3D artist who can draw, he will generally make the think ahead of time before doing anything else. Let's unhide the eyeball. I'm going to make everything solid. And as you can see, it's going right through that eyeball. So let's just go and fix that. Let's grab the back ones, move them slightly forward. Deselect these. And just keep moving these out slightly forward again and then once again go and adjust it to the final one as you can see these need to move forward turn on the smooth now to see if, with the smooth if it's breaking just look around see if there's enough space for a, for an eyelid but you don't need a terrible amount of space slightly shift it back okay and please don't delve the, don't sit there for hours on the details because you're going to be doing all the details in ZBrush ZBrush will be, and Mudbox will be there for doing creases, wrinkles, pores. Even I don't do pores in ZBrush because it's just a waste of time. If you've got years of your life, go for it. I do, I, I do it in texture. It's a lot quicker, a lot qu cleaner, a lot easier. I'm just going to shift these over slightly because we started to get it. It's too compressed up here now. Just shift all of it slightly over. And as you can see, it's starting to create a funny speed bump. Fix it. You can see it, so fix it. Shift back, shift all of it slightly back, and now I'm going to leave it as it is for now. Hide the eyeball, thank you. If you need to duplicate the eyeball to the other side, just go Control V, make it an instance. In this case, you don't want to move the pivot from the center of the eye because you want the eye to be able to look from the center of the eyeball. What you do is you go to Hierarchy and you say Use Working Pivot. What that means is it uses the center of the world as your pivot. So you tick that on, you mirror it and then you turn it back off. Okay. I'm going to add the same shader to all of it because this purple and all this is mixing. I'm just going to add a simple gray with a highlight so if there is any issues in the mesh I can see it straight away because the highlight will pick up any defects. Okay, let's hide the eyeballs for now and let's carry on. Now we're going to move from the mouth. That's it for the eyes for now. Go into your edit poly. I'm going to turn off show end result. Just grab any of the polys. It really makes no difference. Hold shift. It'll ask you, do you want to clone to object? You say no. I want to clone to element. Which means it'll make it will it's still the same object, but it's a separate element. So if I click on it and say, I want to select the eye. You can select the eye, then you can select them out separately. Let's go and place it. Start with the middle outwards. Let's turn on the show end result. Okay, and then I know I'm going to add two rows of details, so I'm going to go straight away and just decide, okay, I'm going to do that. And what you can do is also add in, so if you really want to start with less detail and then work your way and add more again. So let's move this forward. Because this is what I might end up doing is slightly, which actually I might do now is unfreeze, slightly shift this down so we can actually get it to 
Don't feel bad. Most of the time, your concept art, even your concept or real photographs, because of the angle it's shot, it won't line up 100% accurate. Just try to get the idea across. Let's shift it forward. Shift it slightly up. Move it more forward. Just keep checking. In this case, my, the the view that counts is the front one. Grab the edge. I'm going to go straight to the corner of the mouth. Hold shift. Rotate it. Put it. Place it. Now the problem lies here is if I do this, it'll be a it'll look like a beak if I move it properly back. So if I go to my left viewport and say it needs to go all the way back there, rotate it slightly so we can get the topology running fine. Bring it up slightly. And now if you go to the perspective viewport, it looks like a beak. It's because there's no detail to make it round. So what we're gonna have to do is in this case, I want to add a row of detail for the corner of the nose, so one for there and one for there. So we're going to add two rows of details. So just grab that edge and that edge. Control adds alt minuses. We're going to connect twice. One, two, and now I'm just going to start shifting it to where it should be. Remember the nose is not perfectly, it's just slight overlaps inwards, so just try to get it behind where it should be. I like to bring this to create that line. Okay, so I'll bring this line in so later on I can bring it through there. Once again, start shaping it. Now this has to come around here, so then we can get this muscle through here. So don't bring it too close. Just bring it around there. And once again, go check in 3D because chances are it's going to be perfectly flat. It will be, I know, because we just added the detail. We need to shape it more, as you can see. So let's just start shifting these things forward. The best way to do it is if you want, is start off going to the left viewport and going, this needs to be a little bit forward. This needs to go behind the nose. This needs to go there. This needs to go around over here. And now you go to the top viewport and you start adjusting it as well. Because you can see it's all good in theory, but unfortunately it still looks too flat. So start shifting it again. And forward again, sideways. Just keep adjusting it until you're happy with the shape. Once again, check the front viewport, check the left viewport. This one, unfortunately, needs to move slightly back so it can creep behind the nose. That's the only thing I, we cannot really budge too much on. And shift to try to get the shape of the lips right. And that's enough for the top. Keep going around again. So grab the edge, grab, create an edge. Because we needed to pinch, add detail there. Same as in doing the hard surface model. If you need the detail, add the detail. We've got the edge coming through. There we go. Go to the left viewport, move it slightly back so we can get it to follow. Because the one line will run through there. This one just needs to run slightly inside. Okay. Grab it again. In this case, we'll do it the opposite. We'll grab it and create them a long way. So we're going to create one, two, three. So bring it down here. Go to your left viewport and shift it forward. Hold it again. Left viewport again and shift it forward. In this case, we don't actually need that extra row of detail. I'm just going to skip it because, well, we it's going to have a mouth pocket anyway. Shift it across. And you don't always need detail everywhere. What I'm going to do for this, because it's not a perfectly side on, I'm going to adjust these off the bat and make them slightly smaller because otherwise it's going to look like he has a beak for a mouth and seriously hook nose. So let's move this slightly back. Just slightly. Doesn't have to be 100%. Just move it a couple of pixels back. It'll be fine. And then you can always adjust it afterwards. Okay. Let's see what it looks like smooth. And we might need to move this down a little bit. So we can actually get the lips shape right. And these can go a little bit down as well. And let's go once again. Check your left viewport. It's tedious, but do it. Bring it in so it actually can create that shape. Okay, now let's start filling out the rest of the face. Because I actually need more detail in there, I'm going to go and say ring, connect once, only once, not twice, just make sure, once. Just make sure all the shapes are right still. Because remember, the more detail you add, things will break. I'm going to grab this, and we're going to grab that edge, and we're going to connect. What we might do in this case is maybe add another row of detail here so we can just connect it properly. But for now it's fine. 
Actually, no, let's just add the row of detail. Let's try to get minimize our headaches because we need to attach these top to bottom. So let's shift that over slightly, shift that over again. Just remember, you will be adding more detail slowly. Please don't go crazy and add it all of a sudden. I'm going to grab these and add one row of detail and shift it along. See if it looks fine in every viewport because you can see it's starting to create a funny kink. Even I can see it from the left viewport. So start shifting them forward. Double click, shift forward. See if these shapes are actually coming across nicely. Always check if things aren't looking too flat. Okay, now we're going to grab this edge here. There, 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 and there. We're going to bridge them. Literally bridge from one side to the other. Now we're creating the cheek. Now we need more detail. We need one for the end of the nose. The top end of the nose because we got one for the bottom end which we need to slightly shift into place now. Is we need one for the top end of the nose. That comes down here. And then we need to add two more rows. So in essence we need to add three rows of detail. But let's start off by adding this row of detail first. So we're going to connect once. The middle one, if you've got two rows of detail, shifts it apart. The other one moves it up and down. Okay. In this case, we just need one row of detail and we need to sh shift it down to about over there. So we can create that end of the nose. And because this detail needs to run properly along it, please start bringing it down. Because we need it to run to the topology of the muscle structure, which will run this way. Okay. Now we need to add two more rows of details. But first, let's see if this one is placed correctly. Always save yourself some headaches and place it properly. And let's go add another row of detail. Two rows this time, one and two. So let's go and connect twice this time. And go to your left viewport. This is going to create your cheeks. So you might as well slightly bring it forward, grab these and slightly bring these back. Just deselect those and slightly bring that Okay, and then once again place, this is going to follow your cheekbone, so start getting them going in the cheekbone motion. You see the curve that it's creating? It will help you in the long run. Try to, for ZBrush and Mudbox, they like to have equal subdivided, a decent subdivided surface. It's not that 100% important in Max, so just try to keep the edges flowing decently. That's best as you can. Okay, I'm going to quickly just shift this back into place because things shifted because of all the extra additions. Just shift them back. Don't worry about the little corner. Don't worry about any of that. Just keep the edges flowing. Okay, let's close off the nose and then extend the, uh, for the head and we'll be good to go. I think we'll be able to create the top of the head and the chin and then that'll be for the end of today. What I'll do is I'll complete it again at home, record it. Next week we'll start on the ear because as you can see, the ear is a lot of intricate details and to attach the ear to the head is a very tricky experiment. Okay, so now we're going to bring this across. So we're going to grab, yeah, this and this and bring it across. I don't want to make it perfectly flat, so just flatten it. Don't bring it straight to the middle in this case, because you need to br create the bridge of the nose. So let's go and bring it forward slightly. We're not going to follow this 100% again, because he's no this nose seems too far forward. There we go. Once again, grab the middle. And now this time go straight to the middle. You will do a lot of massaging. If you've ever played with clay and you modeled in clay, it's awesome, but it's also a little bit tedious. Same as in 3D. You have to keep kneading the clay, modeling it, and shaping it until you're happy with it. I'm going to grab those. Go to the top viewport because chances are it's very pointy at the moment, like with everything else. And the nose, unfortunately, is not that pointy. So just start shifting it and placing your detail where you need it. For now, I think that's fine. Just make sure the contours run correctly because you need these contours to run that way. So run it through. This nose is not as wide as I've made it. Okay. Now you bring the rest of the lines through. So in this case, you can either decide to bring these over or those down. Let's bring these down. Why not? Because you'll need one, two, three. So let's go straight to the end. So we'll start from, let's say, there. Bring it straight to the part of the nose there. And then we'll add the detail in the middle. Just make sure that your edges are running fine. So we're going to have to add in one, two rows of detail to connect to there. So grab across, connect twice, and start shaping it. Before you even connect, just start shaping it because you can see that it's already making it way too fat. Shift it across. 
He's got a funny kink in his nose, yeah, but we'll do that in in uh, ZBrush or Mudbox, whichever we decide to go with at that stage. Move it up. There we go. And start creating that funny shape. Go to the left viewport and make sure that everything is running the way it should be. Just slightly shift it in because we don't want it to be 100% accurate to the side because it will just be too crazy. Let's shift these forward. Make sure these, you can see if there's a funny line, move it forward. Make sure these lines constantly run accurately. This needs to become a little bit back, a little bit forward, and then we'll start connecting these. Now we can go and connect them, grab your edges, and let's go bridge these. Bridge. You can bridge multiple at the same time, so let's just grab all of them and click bridge. And let's see what that looks like so far. That might that part of that might be too wide, leading up to it, so we'll just push these in. Because the, that unfortunately, let's see where it is, might be too far down and too, because we're going to create the nose separately. We The same as the hand, the hand will be created separately and attached to the body. Because the hand needs a specific topology. As you can see, that's going too far back. We need the brow to start kicking in, so bring in the brow. So now we're going to grab those edges, drag them up. Now we're going to start creating the brow. Once again, start creating the topology. Run it. Start cre creating it. In this case, we don't want them to go all the way to the middle, so just start shifting these slightly off center, just slightly. So eventually, in the long run, they will end up running at that angle. So we don't have them all pinching in the middle because that will cause a lot of headaches. Let's grab these again. In the left viewport, they might be totally off. We need to move them forward. This back, this one at the back, it might be too far forward. And then once again. Final check is your perspective. Always check your perspective. As you can see, that's going to cause a funny shape, so we already can shift it in that and start creating the shapes. Shift that across. What I'm going to do is target weld that straight to there. Or what we can do is shift this, for example, shift this one up here, hold shift, and then bridge these two here. I'm just trying to avoid triangles. You can see that if I do a symmetry and smooth, it's creating a funny bump. Fix it. Shift these forward. Shift them forward. Then if you realize they're too far forward, you can shift them back. Slightly. Okay. Try to avoid making it also too flat. Once again, the most common beginner mistake, actually beginners, most people even in the they've been doing it for years, is you have a tendency of making things too flat. Most people's faces aren't, aren't terribly flat. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. I'm not going to spend too much time worrying about it, but that's point is going to cause headaches, so let's just shift it. Okay, there you go, that's fine for now. Let's carry on. Let's, now let's just do the chin quickly, and then we'll adjust the top there. Grab the bottom ones, there, there, and there. Don't worry about that one, I will just bridge between it. It's just easier to grab these down and work with it. What I'm going to need to do now is create a halfway mark. We might actually have to do, end up doing one row, two rows. So that let's just do that straight away. So we grab there and then grab there. Let's see what it looks like smoothened. Double click to grab an entire loop. To grab a ring is hold shift and select the one that you want to go next to it. We'll grab the, okay, so just double click to grab a loop. Let's move it forward. We don't want it to move that far forward. Remember, we're not actually trying to follow that 100% again. Let's shift this one slightly back. Because there's not enough detail, you can see sometimes it might smooth in too much. So let's just shift these slightly forward, forward, and now we need to get this shape kicked, kicking. There we go. Alt X will make the X-ray, uh, X-ray best way, makes it see through. Now what we need to do is these lines need to run in here. So let's first of all start getting these to go up. And we need to bridge this and that one. So let's go and grab this, that, and bridge. Let's just bridge one at a time and fix one problem at a time. Grab it, go to your left view, and you can see this line needs to follow through. So grab that one and start getting it to follow through. Okay. Don't worry, the topology will, you will be able to see it and lead it, your, it will lead your eye through it. The nose has to lead through. The same as here, needs to slowly follow through the nose shape. That will follow through, that will follow through. It will become easier. It will take you a while to get used to it, but you will get the hang of it. Bring this up here so that it can follow through. And then just start spacing them so they at least look a little bit better. 
because you don't want them to be all crammed up in one spot unless the intention is to give them a very creased chin or whatever it might be. Generally, you don't. And there we go. For now, that's fine. I think it's a little bit too much of a gap there, so let's just turn it down. Go to your left viewport again, double check, and this unfortunately needs to come down there and down here and there. Okay, and let's once again adjust it and adjust it. Okay, this one needs to slightly shift up. Let's go carry on. Now we've added the chin piece. Let's go add in the forehead. It's it's literally shaping until you actually get something you're happy with. Hold this, bring it back. In this case, bring it to, let's say, about over there. Let's see if it's creating a decent shape. Yeah, now you need to shape the front because that's not going to be acceptable. This needs to go to the side. The side. Start creating the shape. Please try to avoid what's happening on the top of mine here with this funny point. Start creating the curves. You want the curves to follow nicely along the forehead. And then once again bring it in. It's a lot of, literally a lot of, of massaging. I don't know how else to explain it besides just keep massaging the mesh until you're happy with it. Don't worry, after the first three hours, if you like it, you'll be lying to yourself. Even I, after this, I'll look at it and go, Whoa! and then after I've brought up my lunch and everything, I'll decide I need to fix it because it's not working and start shifting it. You need to work a lot. It, nothing will come easy, especially when it's shifting this many verts around. I mean, like right now you can see, for me, it looks like his brow is too flat, unless that's the way it is, but I don't think it should be. And if you can, please buy one of those mirrors. If you don't know, ask any girl. It's the ones that you apply the makeup, the little one that rotates and spins around and stuff, the way it magnifies on one side and normal on the other side. I don't know what it's called. I have one because I just sit there going, and try to look at the creases and the wrinkles and see what the, the eye actually does. Because it's all nice and well to say I've got all the reference in the world, but you actually do. It's called a mirror. Look at it. Okay. I know it might seem vain to look at yourself in the mirror, but in the long run, you'll save yourself so many headaches, especially when you come to texturing. Okay, now let's create the back of the head. There's two ways to do it. You can bring it from the side around or from the top around. It really makes no difference. Let's do the side around. So we're going to grab these edges of here. You can grab all the way, but I'm just going to grab up to the bottom of the ear. Hold shift. And now I'm going to bring it to the back end, let's say, to follow this line of the ear. Okay. So we're going to place it. Maybe I went too far and start placing it to where the head would be. There we go. Start shifting it to where the ear will connect. Don't worry about the ear. You will be cutting. This is the only time you'll be using the cut tool is to try and cut and fit that thing into place because... The ear is the trickiest thing to try and actually fit in. I wish you could just place it there and it automatically attaches, but it can't. That's the only time things should be automated. Now I'm trying to create a groove here. What I think I might need to do is add another row of detail to bring around here. But let's not stress too much about it for now. Actually, no. It's going to bug me. So let's do that quickly. I'm going to bring this edge loop around. So what I'm trying to do here is bring this one more edge loop one more time around here. Okay, and then we can worry about adding in extra side pieces. Let's just grab this one over here and this one here and shift it back. Or shift it across, hold shift. I'm going to target weld it to the top one because we know the top one's working. And let's just start getting these edges working and flowing. And once again, bring this back. Back here. Okay, now we can grab those and hold shift. Now we can actually bring it back and start creating it. There, there, there. Remember, the back of the head does not need that much detail unless there's something special happening there, like you had a metal wound of some kind, who knows. But generally, your back of your head doesn't need much detail at all. Okay, now we've done that. Let's make sure the top view looks decent. We are going to go to the extremes. I went halfway and then I'm going to go straight to the end. And then we can add more detail afterwards. Back of the head. Bring it to the middle. That's why I always make sure you, your grid works because you want to make sure you know where the middle is at all times. And turn your smooth on. And we're going to get some interesting results of too pointy and not round enough. So we need to add two rows of detail here. And we need to add two rows of detail there. So go to your left viewport. 
let's add the back ones, it's the easier one. Say connect twice, go to your top viewport, and adjust it. Okay, so just deselect those again and adjust it until your head looks less like a a V and more like a curve. Let's just double click there and slightly shift it. Just checking all the angles if it looks fine. Don't worry too much. Once again, you can shift all of this once you go into ZBrush. Okay. Let's go finish it off now. Let's add two more rows of detail and then start closing off the top there. I'm going to connect in this case. Actually, we only need to connect one, two. So yeah, two. You can judge by there how many two rows you need to bring through here. So we're going to connect twice. Go to the top view and adjust it until it looks semi-okay. As you can see in the front view, we might have gone too much on the, into the ear space, so just grab it and bring it over slightly. There we go. And then double check if everything looks fine again. If nothing's pinching weird or doing something it shouldn't. Okay, we've got a bit of a cheek going. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, let's carry on with the rest there. Another way to do it is double click here. We'll grab, we'll, click. we'll grab the entire open edge. You just need to shift it up. Go to the front view and make sure that it's actually following some sort of a edge shape. And now we're going to target weld this to that one. So we're going to grab this floating one hiding underneath here and target weld. The way to target weld is say you're the child. Click left click on it and say go to your parent. Okay. And now we need to sh shift these because these need to run little bit better. What I'm done now is I'm just going to add in extra detail I need straight away. So I'm going to shift these down. You can shape with whatever method works for you. Verts, edges, just try to avoid polys. Polys are dangerous. There we go. Let's try to get these shapes going. Okay. This one can run down the middle, I don't mind. Let's double check the left side again. Just make sure these edges are running smooth all the time. It's important. Because the moment you give this to a technical guy to start skinning and making morph targets, he will cry if it does not work properly. Problem is, uh, when you start modeling and if you work in a big team and you have the luxury of just modeling, you sometimes forget that somebody has to skin, pose, and animate this. And if you make it so many polys that they can't, it makes their life a little bit harder. So just be a good team player. And if you don't know what they need from you, just ask. It's a lot easier. It's not embar it's not there's nothing wrong with asking. What's more embarrassing is when you screw it up and then they have to fix it for you. Because most of the time a T T D guy it's just quicker for them to fix it than to send it back to you, especially if you don't know what they're actually asking you to do. Okay, let's try to get that curve going. As you can see, once again I'm going to target weld that to that. Same similar same concept. Child, parent. If you've got this funny box, it just press J, it'll get rid of it. It's just a bounding box to show you what's actually in the selection group. Okay, so I'm just going to turn that off for now. And let's carry on. Now for the side topology, I like this to run this way so we can actually get this topology to run decently across the head here. So just shift these around. You can see it's starting to run nicely. The same with this one. Start slowly getting them all to curve. And in this case, you can see the spacing is a little bit out of whack, so start sh shifting it. Also make sure in the top viewport that the spacing is right. Just check every viewport all the time. And make sure you've got a, a way to cut in the ear. And grab them again and space them. And what you generally do is you'll start with your body and then you, everything you'll build from your body outwards. Okay. Once again, grab that edge. You've got it already selected. Might as well move it up. Let's shift these one around, yeah, around, start getting the shape again, these can go slightly forward, forward, and now you need to attach this one again, and then we need to go to the front view because I'm sure it's totally wrong, and shift them over, and target weld that one again, to there, okay, and then shift these over, oh, slightly down, now you can see we're starting to get the shape of the head. So now we're going to start creating the shape of the head. There's multiple ways. You can do it this way or you can do it from the front back, whichever makes you happy. Really. There's no right or wrong. As long as the topology runs fine, there's no right or wrong. 
Let's get this going. Get this curve going. Now we're trying to get that curve going as well. Just think of curves and lines all the time. There's a lot of people that still can't model the topology well or properly or any of any of it actually can't model at all. And they've been in the industry for science because they just don't bother trying to learn more. Always keep learning. Don't worry, in, a, in a, three years from now, they'll go, no, this topology is totally wrong for motion capturing. And you'll go, oh, dope. It'll happen. Now I'm going to start from this one backwards. I'm going to grab the little bit of the hairline left and go shift, shift, and then let's connect those and shape those. Target weld again. I'm going to target weld that to there, that to there. Now I'm going to turn to my smooth and see how flat his head on the top looks. And start shifting it up. Too much here because they'll just be too flat as well, and still just start shifting it. And then go to the front viewport and adjust every single viewport all the time. Keep in mind, John. I was asked which viewport you should model in. All of them, all the time. It's the same as if you're doing architectural stuff. You will not, but you yes, generally you'll start the floor plan from the top, but you'll also need to know what the windows and the side look like and all that, and that's why they have elevations. Same in 3D. Just start shifting these to space them so they don't compress too much at the top. Okay, there we go, that's fine. Might be a bit too flat in the top here. Just shift them over. Just keep shifting. That's all it really is, is literally moving points around. Okay, and let's finish off the top. Now we're going to grab that again. One more and one more. Don't worry about if they're beautifully placed, you're going to place them now. Turn off show end result again, target weld. I'm going to weld those there and weld those there. Go to your left viewport. I can see that I'm not going to like the, the way the topology is running over here, so I'm going to just try to fix it already before I even smoothen it. Move those over. Move that up. See, I'm trying to get the lines to run, so they run straight into the face, and I want these lines to run nicely so they run into the back of the head and straight into the neck. Always think ahead. Don't worry, this would take half the time if I didn't even care about any topology and if I was never going to skin it, I wouldn't care either. But if it's going to animate, it is important to actually get it run, done properly. Let's slightly shift the middle up. There we go. And there we go. And now let's close it off. This might be the hardest part of your entire mesh is to close it off because you'll notice that there's not enough detail. So we'll just work our way outwards. So there's in this case, we actually got very lucky and we actually got perfect quads. So we can grab it, cap it, and we're done. So we've got a four-sided. If you don't want, you can follow that through and keep a triangle. Triangle in the back of the head is not the end of the world because you'll never see it. It's either covered by hair or something else. You'll rarely ever see it. Let's just connect one. And then I need to shape it a little bit just to add more detail here. And now I'm going to connect it. I'm going to keep one triangle. It's not going to be, it's going to bug me, but it's not going to really be the end of the world. Okay. There we go. The front of the head is relatively simple again. Let's just do one more. Let's bring the front of the chin down. Let's just double check if the head looks fine. It doesn't look like he was beaten too much as a child. It's fine. Okay. Just be honest with yourself. Always don't lie to yourself and say, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Please, we don't need it people that go to American Idols who think they can sing. We need people that can at least look at it and be honest. We are all creative. Chances are we hate the stuff we do all the time anyway. And then all our friends say, that looks so cool. And you go, okay. At least you think so. And that's why you generally have an outside opinion because you're always the first one to mark yourself. Let's bring this up. into under here. I'm going to bring it straight to where the neckline will be. So I'm going to say there, there. And then I'm going to, the most important in this case, is try to get the shape right, where it connects to the neck, which in this case is actually not too bad. Now I'm going to bring it back down to the middle again to get to the Adam's apple and to end it off. Because now we need to create the muscles in the neck, so when he turns his head, it actually works accurately. It's not too bad. He doesn't have such a flat chin. I'm going to shift these slightly back because it looks like he's, I know he's supposed to have a euro chin, but it's a little bit too much. There we go. And shift them across again, especially in this area over here. You can shift them across. That's fine. Let's leave it for now. And then once again, if you need to, you grab this edge here, the bridge, the bridge, and then you can see you need to add in one, two rows of detail, and then you close it off. 
and that will be the way to use it. And you've roughly got, all you need to do is flesh out as much of it as quick, as possible. It will not look like him in like three hours. You need to shape it out. You need to get the shapes going. You need to make sure everything is working the way it should. Then you can worry about making sure that it, it gets the ridge, the little nice cut under the eye. Then you can go and worry about that. But in the beginning, please don't worry about that. You're going to kill too much time on trivial things that make no difference whatsoever. Okay. Then you go and bridge between the two if you need to. Once again, go and grab it. Front viewport will probably be beautifully flat. Go and adjust it again. Smooth it off. Shift it down. Go to the left viewport. Don't forget you need to adjust it in every viewport. There we go. And start getting these contours running properly again. There we go. And there we go. Just keep getting the contours. The key is to get the contours. It's like looking at, at a topography map of the world. The contours are so important. It shows you the peaks, the valleys. It's the same in here. And then once again, I think I'm going to end up having a triangle, but it's not the end of the world. We can fix that. I'm going to click here. Unless you can see it very far into the future, generally you can end up with the triangle that you have to fix. And then you can also cap it off and see how bad the triangle is. My best advice is always see if the triangle is causing any funny pinching. If it isn't, then leave it. Because you can always fix it later. Okay. There we go. You've got your basic rough shape of your head before you have to do anything else with it.